God is always working around us, right? We learned that last week. God is always at work. He's always working around us. And when we start looking for that and we start joining him in that, that's how we can be in God's will. And sometimes when we start thinking about being in God's will, I put it on that side. She's always afraid I'm going to dump my coffee on her. Because you threaten me? I know, I threaten her. <laughs> I almost did last week. I kicked the stand and it, it, was a, it could have been a mess. But it would have been God's will, I think, you know? Because God is always working. And he's always working around us. And we're always trying to see where God is working around us. And when we start talking about God's will, we, sometimes we think God's will is so, this, like, long, far-off thing that we strive and we look for, and we it's like an elusive, um, abstract thing that we kind of think of. But that's not the way it works. God's will, when we start looking around and seeing what God is doing and we join Him, we are in His will. And when we are looking at different things in our life, like I talked about this a couple weeks ago, um, a lot of the time we are saying, God, what's your will for my life? Well, that's the wrong question, right? That, that effect was really good there. That's the wrong question. But the right question is, what is God's will, right? When we ask, what is God's will for my life, who is at the center of that question? Me, because what is it for my life? But when we ask, what is God's will, who's the center of that question? God, and that should be the center of everything that we do. When we are looking at things in our life, to do, and we're praying, and we're trying to discern what God wants us to do, we need to have him be the center of that question, not us be the center of the question. So we want to live a God-centered life. That's what we talked about last week. And wouldn't it be great if there were like five easy steps to knowing God's will? We are in a society of steps. I was looking, I googled this online this week, and There are five steps for this, 10 steps for that, 12 steps for this. We love our step programs, right? And God's will doesn't work like that. I mean, some of these things that I found were like five steps to walking down the street. I mean, (laughs) I think step number one was walk down the street. I mean, you don't, yeah, never mind. I was at a pregnancy resource center the other day, which, by the way, out on, where's Vic at? Did you hand those out, or are they out on the counter? Out on the counter is a, a program that you can nominate nonprofits for a special grant here in Crook County, and the Pregnancy Resource Center is asking us if we will help them in that. So if you're interested in doing that, fill out that paperwork and email it or turn it into Man Mortgage, right? So... Um, do that. But when I was talking to the manager at Pregnancy Resource Center, and we were looking at all of our fatherhood stuff, all of the brochures that we have that we get is five steps to being a better dad, 12 things you need to know before you're a dad, 10 ways to be a better dad. They all had these steps, right? And she asked me, how come all of the fatherhood things have all these steps and all the stuff for the, for the mothers, it doesn't have anything like that. I says, well, guys need a very clear this, 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 and then we accomplish it, right? Sometimes when we do read the directions, right? Yeah, guys are very driven, and they want to accomplish it. They say, yes, we have accomplished it. That's why you see guys driving down the freeway, passing all these trucks, and they will never pull over at a rest stop because they'll lose all that ground that they made up passing those trucks because we're very goal-oriented, right? So... It, it might feel good to have five easy steps to following God's will, but that's not the way it works. That's what religion is, right? You have to follow the tradition. You have to do a list of things. That's what religion says. But what God wants is what? Remember, we've talked about this. This is a quiz Sunday as you're eating your popcorn. What does God want? God wants a relationship. He, he wants a relationship with you. And that's what we're going to talk about today is deepening our relationship with God. And kind of the key to understanding that relationship 
And this comes down to your notes. Everybody take out your note pages, wave them in the air. Um, the first thing on your notes, it says, God pursues... I don't think this is turned on, Scotty. The first thing it says is God pursues a continuing, continuing love relationship with me that is real and personal. God pursues a continuing love relationship with me that is real and personal. All right? So I gave you this memory verse a few weeks ago, and I've given you some time to practice it. So I want to know if you know the memory verse that was in John 15, 5. All right, for those of you that know it, read it with me, will you? Okay. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. You guys are very good. I am very proud of each and every one of you for memorizing that. Apart from me, we can do nothing. Apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. And Jesus wants us to have that deep and loving relationship with him, that intimate relationship with him. <clears throat> and this week we're going to be talking about deepening that relationship. As we go through this, you kind of see the kind of steps, step program, I guess you could say. Not really, this really is choices. But you can see that we're on this second, second thing of a loving relationship, a deeper relationship with God. And apart from that, we cannot know God's will. And when we don't know, don't have that loving relationship with Jesus and God, and we are searching for his will, it can become frustrating. We can be empty. We can have these lives that are just full of anxiety and all kinds of worry. We, come out, we might feel lost. And really, there's no way to short circuit or shortcut the idea of knowing God's will past a relationship with him. Because if you don't have a relationship with him, there is no way you are going to be able to know and understand his purpose and his will for your life. Look at James, James 4, 8. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Come close to God and God will come close to you. He desires, he desires a deep relationship with you and he wants to be a part of your life. So today, I'm going to share four things. These aren't steps. These are just four things. All right. Share four things that will help us in deepening our relationship with God. So if you got your pens ready, there's going to be a lot of fill in the blanks there. So um, we will get started. The first, the first thing is um, accepting God's love. Accepting God's love every day. I want, you to, I want you to say this with me. I'm going to have it on the screen so we don't get confused. Um, you guys online, I want to hear you this morning. When we say this, I just want you to shout it. I don't care if you're in your pajamas in your living room. It's all good. But I want you to shout this with us, all right? So on the count of three, everybody here in person and everybody online, I want you to shout this, okay? One, two, three. God loves me. That's pretty good, but the people at home, I didn't quite hear you, so we're going to do it one more time, and I want you to really get into it, right? Because this is important. This is an important truth from Scripture, all right? So one, two, three. God loves me. Amen. I am so excited that you guys feel that way, and isn't it great to know that? Isn't it great to know that God loves me? This little, tiny, insignificant-looking thing in this universe. But God desires a relationship with each and every one of us. Think about this for a second. How ginormous... Is that a word? Ginormous? It is now. How ginormous the universe is compared to how small we are. But God, out of all of the universe, cares about you. He cares about me. He cares about our neighbor. He desires this deep relationship, this deep, loving relationship with each and every one of us. John, 1 John 4, 9 through 10. It says, God shows, 
showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love, real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to, as a sacrifice to take our sins away. That is what real love is. That is what the love of God is. That he loves us so much that he would send his only son to die on that cross. And I want you to understand that dying on that cross wasn't just like, oh, I'm going to hang here and go to sleep and I'll pass away. No, that was an excruciating, torturous death. He hung on that cross. He was whipped. He was beaten. He was tortured. And he took all of that because of the love that he has for you. A love that he has for you. And that is a deep love. <clears throat> In Romans 8, 38 and 39, it says, I am convinced that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Neither death nor life, neither demons or angels, neither fears or for today or worries for tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Isn't that amazing? Nothing can separate us. from. That's how deep of a love God has for us. He loves us. So how can we deepen our love for him? So we have some choices that we can make, right? So again, here's a list for all the guys in here. <laughs> a list. I have four choices that can deepen our love relationship with God. Okay, so the first one or this is the, I don't even know what, what number I'm on. Give God first place in your life every day. Okay, give God first place in your life every day. And how does that work? What does that look like? In Matthew 6.33, Matthew 6.33, it says, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and give everything. He will give you everything he needs. And some translations may say, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Yeah, so you can see how old I am when I, that's how I memorized it. But what does it look like to put God first every day? What does it look like to put God first every day? So we have some, some choices that we can make, all right? So in my day, it looks like have a daily quiet time. Have a daily quiet time with God. And it might be when you get up in the morning. It might be before you go to bed at night. It might be in the afternoon when you can get away from it all. I don't know what it looks like for you, but have a daily quiet time. Get away from the busyness. Get away from all the, the distractions and take time to be with God. Um, maybe read, read God's word a little bit. Uh, meditate on that. Maybe uh, take a breath and just be quiet, right? In Psalms 46.10, it says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation, I will honor, be honored throughout the world. So when we take time and we are still before God, we are honoring Him. And that is helping us to build this deeper relationship with God. And it's, it's, more, than just, um, it's more than just being quiet. It's getting into God's Word and deepening our relationship with him. In Psalms 1, it says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join with the mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit in season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. I love that psalm. I love that psalm, especially verse 3. especially verse 3, because it says they are like trees planted along the riverbank and their roots have gone deep into the water, deep into the nutrition. And that's what we do when we build this deep, loving relationship with God is our roots are going down into Jesus, right? They're going down into His Word and meditating on His Word and understanding who God is and what God wants in our lives and understanding our purpose of serving Him. 
In Matthew 6, 6, it says, But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father will see, who sees everything, will reward you. So he, he, what Matthew is explaining here is get away from the busyness. Get away from the distractions that are going to distract you as you are talking and, and building this deep relationship with Jesus. All right? Go off by yourself and pray. Take time. Take a breath, right? Sometimes we just need that cleansing breath. Ready? Everybody breathe in and out. Doesn't that feel good? That's kind of the way that it feels when we just, we're just, we're going to be still and know that God is, that God is God. Sometimes we just have to take a breath and just be in his presence. So in this quiet time, we will read the Bible, we'll meditate on what it says, we'll pray, talk to God about things. But it's also important that we are just quiet, that we listen. We just take time to be in the presence of God and bask in that and listen. All right. So the, the next, the second thing to help us have this uh, daily thing is... Um, be fully engaged in the services on the weekend, like on the Sunday service. Be fully engaged. What does that mean? A lot of people come and they say, well, our worship service is at 10, and then we do the sermon, and then we do communion, and then we do this. I want you to understand that the entire morning is designed to be worship. It's, all of this is part of our worship for God, right? So we sing songs. We sing songs of praise and worship to God. Then we come into our sermon, and this is a is an act of worship because we are digging into his word. We are talking about what God has given to us in the Bible. That's part of our worship and deepening this relationship with God. And then we will have communion, and that's a very special time where we come and we worship God and we thank Jesus for, for what he has done on that cross in our lives. We thank him for the salvation that only he can bring and the love that only he can give to us and his joy. And when we come to offering, that is an act of worship. That is an act of worship when, Jesus, when God commands us, says, this is what I want you to do. And we'll touch on that in a little bit. Uh, Hebrews 12, 25, it says, Be careful that you do not refuse to listen to the one who is speaking. Notice that one is capitalized, right? Who is he talking about? God, yeah, Jesus. For if the people of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to Moses, the earthly messenger... We will certainly not escape if we reject the one who is speaking to us from heaven. So it's important that we come and we engage in, in worship together because we are worshiping Jesus. In Colossians 3.16, it says, Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and Teach and counsel each other with all wisdom that he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with a thankful heart. Their, respons their responsibility is to equip God's people to do the work and build up the church, the body of Christ. So when we come together on a Sunday morning and we are worshiping, and we are, we are worshiping through song, we are worshiping through the sermon, we are worshiping through communion, we are worshiping through giving, that is all equipping us to be disciples of Jesus, right? That's all equipping us to have this deep and loving relationship with God. Um, Ephesians 4.12, it says, their responsibility is to equip the God's people and to build them up in Christ, the body of Christ. <clears throat> That's how you put God first, all right? So another way to put God first is in your finances, give in an honoring way. Give in an honoring way. Matthew 6, 21, it says, Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be. Wherever your treasure is, there is the desires of your heart. Give to God in an honoring way. Give to God out of the joy that you have of worshiping Him. Give to God out of the love that you have for Him, right? He has is, he is told us throughout the Bible that we are to give a tithe, right? That's 10%, the first 10%. And, I, and in, in many places, it'll say the best 10%, right? The first fruits, the best of, of what you have get, gotten. And that doesn't change in the New Testament, right? 
In fact, it even goes above and beyond that because in the New Testament, it says, give generously. So um, when we start looking at our finances, we are to give generously. We're to give our tithe and we are to give generously. In Proverbs 3, 9 through 10, it says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and give and with the best part of everything that you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. And in Malachi, this is probably the go-to verse for a stewardship thought, right? I bet a lot of you know this one already. He brings says, bring your tithes to the storehouse so that there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord, the God of heaven's army, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out the blessings so great you won't even have, have room, enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. You realize what God's saying there? He's saying, try this. Put me to the test and see how I will bless you. And when we start deepening, working on deepening our relationship with God, and we start giving our, giving our tithe and even above that, giving generously, putting God to the test, He is going to bless us. He is going to bless us over and over and over. Um, so I don't know where you're at in your giving, but uh, if you have, don't give a tithe, let me give you an idea. Take a four-week challenge or four-month challenge. And for four months, try and give a tithe and see how God blesses you with that. All right? The fourth way to put God first is, in my relationships, commit to building relationships with others in the church. Commit to building relationships with others in the church. Why is this even important? In Matthew 18.20, it says, for where two or three are gathered as my followers, there I am there among them. All right? Building relationships in the church. Building relationships in the church. We come together and we worship God. And he says, where two or three are gathered, there I am. And when you dig into that, when two or three are gathered, what's happening? We are spurring one another on in the love of Jesus, right? We are spur encouraging each other to become more like Jesus. Together. Right on. It's been a while since I did that. I'm very proud of y'all. I hope that online you got the together part. Um, becoming more like Jesus together. When we come together, we are encouraging one another. We are fellowshipping with one another. We are coming alongside each other. We are praying for each other, for things that are going on in our lives. We are supporting each other. Because that's what the family of God does, amen? And when we become more like Jesus together, we want to support each other even more and more and more. And that might look like coming to Sunday mornings and taking time after church and fellowshipping around here. Because you know what? We don't have to clean up anymore. So you don't have to rush out. We can fellowship together and get to know each other, get to know what's going on in each other's lives so that we can come together and we can pray for each other. It might look like going to a Bible study with people here in the church so that you can dig deeper into God's Word. In Acts um, 5.42, it says, And every day in the temple and from house to house, they continued to teach and preach the message of Jesus, the Messiah, that Jesus is the Messiah. And when we come together in Bible studies, that's what we're teaching is Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is our Lord. Jesus is the only way to salvation. Amen? John 13, 34, and 35. So I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love one another. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. The love that we have for one another. And that only happens when we can be around each other. And we can get to know each other. And we can love on each other. And we can become more like Jesus together. And when we have that love for each other... What, is that ha what happens? The world knows that we are the disciples of Jesus. They see something different because of the way that we act around people. Proverbs 3, 6. It says, Seek His will in all you do, and He will show you which path to take. Seek His will in all you do. And that leads us into the number three in deepening our relationship with God. 
All right, so we seek His will in all we do, and He will show us the path to take. And that is, we obey God's will every day. Last week, I talked about asking this question. Every day when you get up, it might be this kind of conversation with God. God, where do you want me to go today? What do you want me to do today? Where are you going to be working that I can be involved in what you're doing? We obey His will every day. In John 14, 15, it says, If you love me, you will obey my commands. If you love me, you will obey my commands. And in James 1, 25, it says, But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you've heard, then God will bless you for doing it. So what's the perfect law? Jesus, right? Jesus is the perfect law. And the things that He has commanded us to do throughout the New Testament and through His teachings, if we know that and we do that, that is how we show that we love Jesus. And that's how we deepen our relationship with Jesus. So the uh, fourth way to deepen our relationship with Jesus is I enjoy God's presence every day. And I was talking about that a little bit um, when we, I said just kind of be in the presence of God. Just take time to soak in His presence. Bask in His presence. Let Him be with you. Don't do all the talking. Let Him speak to your heart. Let the Holy Spirit move in your life. All right? Um, in John 13... Or 17, 13, it says, Now I am coming to you. I told you the, them many things while I was with them in this world so that they would be filled with my joy. <clears throat> so when we enjoy God's presence and we have Jesus in our lives, we have the joy of Jesus inside of us. The joy that only Jesus can bring. And He, he brings us the joy that keeps us going. And when we deepen our relationship with Jesus, we are enjoying that joy, right? We are enjoying His presence. We are, t we are in His presence, and we are saying, Jesus, we love you. We want to be in you. And we just take time to deepen our relationship with God. And our memory verse this week, our memory verse this week is Matthew 22, 37 through 38, it says, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. So when we are, are sitting in the presence of God, and we are in that quiet time, and we are talking to God, we are loving God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind. That's, that's, with, that's with all of our being we are loving God. And when we deepen that relationship with God and we are able to, to love Him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind, as we go about our day, we're going to see things that God is doing around us. We're going to see what God is doing, and that's going to be the invitation for us to join Him in His will. All right? So my challenge for you this week is... Number one, it's the same challenge as last week. Keep an eye open for where God is working around you so that you can join Him. But number two, the, 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 the memory verse, I want you to memorize Matthew 22, 38, 37, and 38. And then I want you to, like the first fill in the blank was, accept God's love. Accept God's love in your life. And you do that by taking some of these steps of taking a daily quiet time and being in His presence and just letting His presence flow over you. Next week, we'll be talking about... Um, I don't know where that one came from. Next week, we're going to be talking about accepting God's invitation, all right? Accepting God's invitation and seeing where He is working and joining Him in what He is doing. So will you pray with me as the van comes back up and I just... I just want to pray that God will help us to build this deep relationship with Him. Father God, we come before you today, and I just ask that you uh, 
continue to help us to open our heart and our mind to you. Lord, just we want we want to be in your presence. And as we take those some of these steps each week and we engage with this sermon and, and this word that you've given us today, Lord, I just pray that, that we can just bask in your glory, bask in your love, in your presence, and we just enjoy being with you as we strive to deepen our relationship with you, as we strive to become more like Jesus together. Lord, we just want to we want to be with you, Lord. And we love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.